Commodus was Roman emperor from 180 to 192. He also ruled as co-emperor with his father Marcus Aurelius from 177 until his father's death in 180. His accession as emperor was the first time a son had succeeded his father since Titus succeeded Vespasian in 79. He was also the first emperor to have both a father and grandfather as the two preceding emperors. Commodus was the first emperor born in the purple, i.e., during his father's reign. Commodus was assassinated in 192. Early life and rise to power. Early life Commodus was born on 31 August 161, as Commodus, in Lanivium, near Rome. He was the son of the reigning emperor, Marcus Aurelius, and Aurelius a first cousin. Faustina the Younger, the youngest daughter of Roman Emperor Antoninus Pius. Commodus had an elder twin brother, Titus Aurelius Fulvus Antoninus, who died in 165. On 12 October 166, Commodus was made Caesar together with his younger brother, Marcus Annius Verus. The latter died in 169 having failed to recover from an operation which left Commodus as Marcus Aurelius a sole surviving son. He was looked after by his father's physician, Galen, in order to keep Commodus healthy and alive. Galen treated many of Commodus' common illnesses. Commodus received extensive tutoring by a multitude of teachers with a focus on intellectual education. Among his teachers one Zacrates, Antistius Capella, Titus Aiu Sanctus, and Pithalaus are mentioned. Commodus is known to have been at Carnantum, the headquarters of Marcus Aurelius during the Marcomannic Wars, in 172. It was presumably there that, on 15 October 172, he was given the victory title Germanicus, in the presence of the army. The title suggests that Commodus was present at his father's victory over the Marcomanni. On 20 January 175, Commodus entered the College of Pontiffs, the starting point of a career in public life. In April 175, Avidius Cassius, governor of Syria, declared himself emperor following rumors that Marcus Aurelius had died. Having been accepted as emperor by Syria, Palestine and Egypt, Cassius carried on his rebellion even after it had become obvious that Marcus was still alive. During the preparations for the campaign against Cassius, the prince assumed his toga virilis on the Danubian front on 7 July 175, thus formally entering adulthood. Cassius, however, was killed by one of his centurions before the campaign against him could begin. Commodus subsequently accompanied his father on a lengthy trip to the eastern provinces, during which he visited Antioch. The emperor and his son then traveled to Athens, where they were initiated into the Eleusinian Mysteries. They then returned to Rome in the autumn of 176. Joint rule with Father Marcus Aurelius was the first emperor since Vespasian to have a biological son of his own and, though he himself was the fifth in the line of the so-called five good emperors, each of whom had adopted his successor, it seems to have been his firm intention that Commodus should be his heir. On 27 November 176, Marcus Aurelius granted Commodus the rank of imperator and, in the middle of 177, the title Augustus, giving his son the same status as his own and formally sharing power. On 23 December of the same year, the two Augustus celebrated a joint triumph, and Commodus was given tribunician power. On 1 January 177, Commodus became consul for the first time, which made him, aged 15, the youngest consul in Roman history up to that time. He subsequently married Bratia Crispina before accompanying his father to the Danubian front once more in 178 where Marcus Aurelius died on 17 March 180, leaving the 18-year-old Commodus sole emperor, sole reign. Upon his ascension, Commodus devalued the Roman currency. He reduced the weight of the denarius from 96 per Roman pound to 105. 
He also reduced the silver purity from 79% to 76%, the silver weight dropping from 2.57 grams to 2.34 grams. In 186 he further reduced the purity and silver weight to 74% and 2.22 grams respectively, being 108 to the Roman pound. His reduction of the denarius during his rule was the largest since the empire's first evaluation during Nero's reign, whereas the reign of Marcus Aurelius had been marked by almost continuous warfare. That of Commodus was comparatively peaceful in the military sense but was marked by political strife and the increasingly arbitrary and capricious behavior of the emperor himself. In the view of Dio Cassius, a contemporary observer of the period, his accession marked the descent from a kingdom of gold to one of iron and rust, a famous comment which has led some historians notably Edward Gibbon, to take Commodus a reign as the beginning of the decline of the Roman Empire. Despite his notoriety and considering the importance of his reign, Commodus' years in power are not well chronicled. The principal surviving literary sources are Dio Cassius, Herodian and the Historia Augusta. Commodus remained with the Danube armies for only a short time before negotiating a peace treaty with the Danubian tribes. He then returned to Rome and celebrated a triumph for the conclusion of the wars on the 22nd of October 180. Unlike the preceding emperors Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius and Marcus Aurelius, he seems to have had little interest in the business of administration and tended throughout his reign to leave the practical running of the state to a succession of favorites beginning with Seoterus, a freedman from Nicomedia who had become in his chamberlain. Dissatisfaction with this state of affairs would lead to a series of conspiracies and attempted coups, which in turn eventually provoked Commodus to take charge of affairs, which he did in an increasingly dictatorial manner. Nevertheless, though the senatorial order came to hate and fear him, the evidence suggests that he remained popular with the army and the common people for much of his reign, not least because of his lavish shows of largesse and because he staged and took part in spectacular gladiatorial combats. One of the ways he paid for his donatives and mass entertainments was to tax the senatorial order, and on many inscriptions, the traditional order of the two nominal powers of the state, the senate and people is provocatively reversed. The conspiracies of 182 at the outset of his reign, Commodus, aged 18, inherited many of his father's senior advisers, notably Tiberius Claudius Pompeianus, his father-in-law Gaius Bruttius Presens, Titus Fundanius Vitricius Pollio, and Alphidius Victorinus, who was prefect of the city of Rome. He also had five surviving sisters, all of them with husbands who were potential rivals. Four of his sisters were considerably older than he. The eldest, Lucilla, held the rank of Augusta as the widow of her first husband, Lucius Verus. The first crisis of the reign came in 182, when Lucilla engineered a conspiracy against her brother. Her motive is alleged to have been envy of the Empress Crispina. Her husband, Pompeianus, was not involved, but two men alleged to have been her lovers. Marcus Amidius Quadratus Annianus and Appius Claudius Quintianus attempted to murder Commodus as he entered a theatre. They bungled the job and were seized by the emperor's bodyguard. Quadratus and Quintianus were executed. Lucilla was exiled to Capri and later killed. Pompeianus retired from public life. One of the two Praetorian prefects, Taratinius Paternus, had actually been involved in the conspiracy but his involvement was not discovered until later on, and in the aftermath, he and his colleague, Sextus Tigidius Perennis, were able to arrange for the murder of Seoterus, the hated chamberlain. Commodus took the loss of Seoterus badly, and Perennis now sees the chance to advance himself by implicating Paternus in a second conspiracy, one apparently led by Publius Salvius Julianus, who was the son of the jurist Salvius Julianus and was betrothed to Paternus' daughter. 
Salvius and Paternus were executed along with a number of other prominent consulars and senators. Didius Julianus, the future emperor and a relative of Salvius Julianus, was dismissed from the governorship of Germania Inferior. Cleander Perennis took over the reins of government and Commodus found a new chamberlain and favorite in Cleander, a Phrygian freedman who had married one of the emperor's mistresses, Demostratia. Cleander was in fact the person who had murdered Saeotarus. After those attempts on his life, Commodus spent much of his time outside Rome, mostly on the family estates at Lanuvium. Being physically strong, his chief interest was in sport, taking part in horse racing, chariot racing, and combats with beasts and men, mostly in private but also on occasion in public. Dacia and Britain Commodus was inaugurated in 183 as consul with Alphidius Victorinus for a colleague and assumed the title Pius. War broke out in Dacia. Few details are available, but it appears two future contenders for the throne, Claudius Albinus and Pescennius Niger, both distinguished themselves in the campaign. Also, in Britain in 184, the governor Ulpius Marcellus re-advanced the Roman frontier northward to the Antonine Wall, but the legionaries revolted against his harsh discipline and acclaimed another legate, Priscus, as emperor. Priscus refused to accept their acclamations, but Perennus had all the legionary legates in Britain cashiered. On 15 October 184 at the Capitoline Games, a cynic philosopher publicly denounced Perennus before Commodus, who was watching, but was immediately put to death. According to Dio Cassius, Perennis, though ruthless and ambitious, was not personally corrupt and generally administered the state well. However, the following year, a detachment of soldiers from Britain also denounced Perennis to the emperor as plotting to make his own son emperor, and Commodus gave them permission to execute him as well as his wife and sons. The fall of Perennis brought a new spate of executions. Alphidius Victorinus committed suicide. Ulpius Marcellus was replaced as governor of Britain by Pertinax, brought to Rome and tried for treason. Marcellus narrowly escaped death. Cleander's zenith and fall Cleander proceeded to concentrate power in his own hands and to enrich himself by becoming responsible for all public offices. He sold and bestowed entry to the Senate, army commands, governorships and, increasingly, even the Suffolk consulships to the highest bidder. Unrest around the empire increased, with large numbers of army deserters causing trouble in Gaul and Germany. Pescennius Niger mopped up the deserters in Gaul in a military campaign, and a revolt in Brittany was put down by two legions brought over from Britain. In 187, one of the leaders of the deserters, Maternus, came from Gaul intending to assassinate Commodus at the festival of the great goddess in March, but he was betrayed and executed. In the same year, Pertinax unmasked a conspiracy by two enemies of Cleander, Antius Burrus and Arius Antoninus. As a result, Commodus appeared even more rarely in public, preferring to live on his estates. Early in 188, Cleander disposed of the current Praetorian prefect, Attilius Ebutianus, and himself took over supreme command of the Praetorians at the new rank of Apugina with two Praetorian prefects subordinate to him. Now at the zenith of his power, Cleander continued to sell public offices as his private business. In the spring of 190, Rome was afflicted by a food shortage, for which the praefectus Anani Papirius Dionysius, the official actually in charge of the grain supply, contrived to lay the blame on Cleander. At the end of June, a mob demonstrated against Cleander during a horse race in the Circus Maximus. He sent the Praetorian Guard to put down the disturbances, but Pertinax, who was now city prefect of Rome, dispatched the Vigila Urbani to oppose them. Cleander fled to Commodus, 
who was at Laurentum in the house of the Quinctilii, for protection, but the mob followed him calling for his head. At the urging of his mistress Marcia, Commodus had Cleander beheaded and his son killed. Other victims at this time were the Praetorian prefect Julius Julianus, Commodus a cousin Aniafunda near Faustino, and his brother-in-law Maimatinus. Papirius Dionysius was executed too. The emperor now changed his name to Lucius Elius Aurelius Commodus. At 29, he took over more of the reins of power, though he continued to rule through a cabal consisting of Marcia, his new chamberlain Eclectus, and the new Praetorian prefect Quintus Emilius Letus, who about this time also had many Christians freed from working in the mines in Sardinia. Marcia, the widow of Quadratus, who had been executed in 182, is alleged to have been a Christian. Megalomania in opposition to the Senate, in his pronouncements and iconography. Commodus had always laid stress on his unique status as a source of godlike power, liberality and physical prowess. Innumerable statues around the empire were set up portraying him in the guise of Hercules, reinforcing the image of him as a demigod, a physical giant, a protector and a battler against beasts and men. Moreover, as Hercules, he could claim to be the son of Jupiter, the representative of the supreme god of the Roman pantheon. These tendencies now increased to megalomaniacal proportions. Far from celebrating his descent from Marcus Aurelius, the actual source of his power, he stressed his own personal uniqueness as the bringer of a new order, seeking to recast the empire in his own image. During 191, the city of Rome was extensively damaged by a fire that raged for several days, during which many public buildings including the Temple of Pax, the Temple of Vesta and parts of the Imperial Palace were destroyed. Perhaps seeing this as an opportunity, early in 192 Commodus, declaring himself the new Romulus, ritually re-founded Rome, renaming the city Colonia Lucia Ania Commodiana. All the months of the year were renamed to correspond exactly with his names. Lucius, Elius, Aurelius, Commodus, Augustus, Herculius, Romanus, Exupratorius, Amazonius, Invictus, Felix, Pius. The legions were renamed Commodiani. The fleet which imported grain from Africa was termed Alexandria Commodiana Togata. The Senate was entitled the Commodian Fortunate Senate. His palace and the Roman people themselves were all given the name Commodianus and the day on which these reforms were decreed was to be called Dies Commodianus. Thus he presented himself as the fountainhead of the empire in Roman life and religion. He also had the head of the Colossus of Nero adjacent to the Colosseum replaced with his own portrait, gave it a club and placed a bronze lion at its feet to make it look like Hercules and added an inscription boasting of being the only left-handed fighter to conquer 12 times 1,000 men. Assassination in November 192, Commodus held plebeian games, in which he shot hundreds of animals with arrows and javelins every morning, and fought as a gladiator every afternoon, winning all the bouts. Also in December he announced his intention to be inaugurate the year 193 as both consul and gladiator on 1 January. At this point, the prefect Letus formed a conspiracy with Eclectus to supplant Commodus with Pertinax, taking Marcia into their confidence. On 31 December Marcia poisoned his food but he vomited up the poison, so the conspirators sent his wrestling partner Narcissus to strangle him in his bath. Upon his death, the Senate declared him a public enemy and restored the original name to the city of Rome and its institutions. Commodus' statues were thrown down. His body was buried in the mausoleum of Hadrian. In 195 the Emperor Septimius Severus, trying to gain favour with the family of Marcus Aurelius, rehabilitated Commodus' a memory and had the Senate aify him. Commodus was succeeded by Pertinax, whose reign was short-lived, being the first to fall victim to the year of the five emperors. Commodus' a death marked the end of the Nerva Antonine dynasty.